In this question, a 17-year-old African-American male presents to your office with cola-colored urine. So African-American cola-colored urine and purpuric skin lesions, purpuric skin lesions. He recently recovered from a flu-like illness. So he had recent history, flu-like illness. The patient has never experienced, experienced symptoms like this before. Skin biopsy reveals granular deposits of IgA in the dermal capillaries. So now we have a biopsy and there is IgA in dermal capillaries. The patient, patient most likely suffers from. So the biggest clue here is really IgA in dermal capillaries, which pretty much should say that this is IgA nephropathy. Another name for it is going to be Berger disease either one of them. So when I look down I see that choice E is Berger disease. Now let me see if other information that is given here correlates with my story. Now how does IgA nephropathy present? So presentation. They usually present in children with painless hematuria. So painless hematuria is going to be there and we can see that there was 17-year-old African-American male presents to your office, office with cola-colored urine. So there is hematuria. They didn't really talk about the pain, but the hematuria is there. And the time it takes from the, from the primary insult to the infection, to the IgA nephropathy is about two to three days. Okay, So they're going to say that either they had an upper respiratory tract infection or a skin infection which you know happened two to three days and soon after they're going to have this cola colored um, cola colored urine or hematuria so this patient has said that he recently recovered from a flu like illness recently who should be you know they they that's it that's what they're insinuating within two to three days recently he recovered from a flu like illness now the hematuria lasts for about several days okay several days and subsides temporarily and returning every few months. So it's going to happen several days and then nothing and then again it's going to happen several days afterward. So it's, a, it's an autoimmune disease, right? So it's going to happen every now and then. Now the subsequent course is quite variable. How it's going to present later on you can't really say. Many people have a normal renal renal function for decades. So this time span could be decades and then it could go back. In 20 to 25 percent of the cases it shows progression to chronic renal failure. That's 20 to 25 percent of the cases. And But that happens over a time period of 20 years. Okay so now let's talk about what we see on light microscopy. So on light microscopy we're going to see normal or we're going to see focal proliferative glomerulonephritis. So we're going to see focal proliferation. Okay. Remember this is a nephritic syndrome. There's going to be focal proliferation or there's going to be mesangial proliferative glomerulonephritis. So it's going to be MPGN membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis okay so the, either they're going to be normal or they're going to have focal proliferation or they're going to have mesangial proliferation what about immunofluorescence under immunofluorescence we're going to see IgA deposition in the mesangium okay IgA deposition in the mesangium is going to be seen in immunofluorescence and the deposition is usually seen in the dermal papilla. Now that's what it says here, granular deposits of IgA in dermal capillaries. That is diagnostic. Okay? You, if you read, if the question only had this part, that should have been enough for you to answer this question. Okay? Anyways, uh, what are some of the other things we know about IgA nephropathy? IgA nephropathy can be associated with other symptoms. Okay? And IgA nephropathy plus extra renal 
symptoms together. This is going to be called Hinoch Schollein Purpura or Hinoch Schollein disease, I should say. Okay, and Hinoch Schollein disease has many ma manifestations. There can be manifestation in the skin, there can be manifestation in the GI, and there can be manifestation in the renal. Okay, we're going to see different manifestations in different places. So in the skin, we're going to see purpuric lesions. And we're going to see these lesions on the extensor surface of arms, legs, and buttocks. Now, I'll try to put a picture of uh, Hinocturaline purpura, purpura and extensor uh, lesions uh, in, in the box below. So please check that out. Um, I'll try to find one. And then from GI, we are going to see abdominal pain. Okay, so there's going to be abdominal pain, vomiting, and then there's going to be intestinal bleeding, okay, and intersusception. All these are going to be, see, these are associated symptoms. These are not that diagnostic. So, you know, I mean, these are associated symptoms. So the GI, abdominal pain, bleeding, intersusception. If you just look at that, you'll not be able to tell that this is IgA nephropathy or Berger disease. You, you need that IgA component somewhere thrown in there or dermal papilla or some, something that is more diagnostic to the disease. And on renal, we already told you that there is going to be involvement of IgA. There is going to be IgA involvement. Okay, now, now let's talk about uh, light microscopy and biopsy a little bit in more details. When this purpuric lesion in the skin is biopsied, we should be able to see necrotizing vasculitis. Okay. What are some of the vasculitis we know of? We know of uh, Pan, we know of um, Wagner, those causes vasculitis as well. But Ig nephropathy is going to cause, I should have written it in red. Okay, so necrotizing i know that's not red but it's it has to do for now right necrotizing vasculitis is going to be seen on dermal vessels okay if you see necrotizing vasculitis on dermal vessels that is the answer right there that's a giveaway you know that's a question that is just they're begging you to pick the mark and also you're going to see this kind of vasculitis in sub epidermal area you're also going to see subepidermal hemorrhage okay subepidermal hemorrhage is also going to be seen this is what you're going to see in light microscopy what about uh, immunofluorescence what are we going to see in immunofluorescence we're going to see iga deposition okay in dermal capillaries that's also going to be seen Again, the, the pattern is going to be granular. It's not uniform. Ig is not everywhere. Wherever it deposits, that's what we see the immunofluorescence. So let's say if this is the glomerulus, you're going to see the deposition pattern like that. You know, the immunofluorescence is going to show like that. You, you got the idea, right? It's because it's, it's, not, it's only in the basement membrane. If it's the anti-GBM antibodies, they are going to be all over the glomerulus. But for IgA, they're going to be kind of granular. Okay, now I would like to make a distinct difference between post streptococcal and IgA because it could look very sim uh, similar. One of the primary differences between post streptococcal and IgA is that post streptococcal is going to have decreased complement, IgA is going to have normal complement. Okay, so PSGN is going to have decreased complement and IgA is going to have normal complement. That's one difference. Another difference is that PSGN is going to happen at about two to three weeks after, but IgA is going to be around two to three days, a lot more recently than PSGN. Both are autoimmune. Both are going to have granular pattern on immunofluorescent. There's a lot of similarity, um, but there is some distinct difference, which you can pick up like that. Anyway, so that's my interpretation of Berger disease or IgA nephropathy.